How's it going guys? John the basic expert here and in last week's video we sort of talked about 0e and how it is more heroic than a lot of people give it credit for. It's not this crawling through the mud and mud core thing. And by the way, some people would ask what Mudcore is, and it's a term that has often been used by people to describe old school play. This idea that you are sort of just stuck in this one level one through three play loop. You never get to domain play. You never actually become this powerful hero. You just, you know, your character eventually dies. It's terrible and you start over. And my point with the last video I made was to sort of uh, break that myth that that's not exactly what the rules specify the game is supposed to be. Why would Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson mention John Carter, Conan, and Fawford and the Grey Mouser as, as inspiration for the game while you're simultaneously playing a game where you're going to die instantly the moment you enter the dungeon? So I hopefully that video helped to dispel that. I know some people disagreed with that take, but you know I provided uh, in-text facts for why I think the way that I think in that regard. And I want to sort of piggyback off of that and sort of uh, give some explanations as to why I think the game has changed the way it has and maybe where some of these misconceptions come from. And I think it starts with the home's basic set, and it has to do with combat rounds. So let's dive into it. So first of all, I don't want to say that, uh, you know, this is going to turn into some sort of addition war thing. I'm not really interested in that at all. Uh, I like the home's basic rules. I like the nostalgia of it, the look of it. The rules are fine. They're fun. And you can have lots of fun with it. But there is this fundamental change within that book that, again, fundamentally changes the way the game is played and the way it feels, and in particular, the way combat feels. And this then translates over into whether or not this game is going to feel heroic or not. So to start, let's start by looking at the three little brown books, the original white box rules. And if there's not a real explicit mention of time in these rules, but there is a point on page eight of book two or three, um, I think it's book three, the Underworld book, uh, where it gives you this measurement of time for turns. And it does give you a, an explicit amount of time for how long a turn tapes, takes. It says, movement, distance is given in volume one, is in segments of approximately 10 minutes. Thus, it takes 10 minutes to move about two moves, 120 feet for a fully armored character. Two moves constitute a turn, except in flight pursuit situations where the moves per turn will be doubled and no mapping is allowed. If we go to the towards the bottom of page eight, it says the following. Melee is fast and furious. There are 10 rounds of combat per turn. Therefore, if there's 10 rounds of combat per one 10 minute turn, that means that each round of combat is one minute long in the three little uh, brown books within OD&D 0E combat is one minute long. When we look at Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, it keeps this with it because um, I, I think Gary was quite fond of that for some for, for one reason or another, and I think it has to do with the heroic nature of the game. But it says on page 61 of the DMG, it says, one minute rounds are devised to offer the maximum choice the maximum of choice with a minimum of complication. This allows the DM and the players the best of both worlds. The system assumes much activity during the course of each round. Envision, if you will, a fencing, boxing, or karate match. During the course of one minute of such competition, there are numerous attacks which are unsuccessful, feints, maneuvering, and so forth. During a one minute melee round, many attacks are made, but some are mere feints, while some are blocked or parried one or possibly several have the chance to actually score damage for such chances the dice are rolled and if the to hit number is equaled or exceeded the attack was successful but otherwise it too was avoided blocked parried or whatever so while a round of combat is not a continuous series of attacks it is neither just a single blow and counter blow affair the opponents spar and move, seeking the opportunity to engage when an opening in the enemy's guard presents itself. So you can see that there's this big sort of abstraction going on in combat in both Zero-E and in Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 1st Edition, where 
A combat round is one minute, and there's lots of attacks going on within that round. There's lots of parrying, feinting, blocking, and sometimes a land hits or an attack hits. Now, what's important to take in mind here, and I want you to think about the last video I made as far as multiple attacks and the concept of what constitutes a normal man, the, the man plus one, two men plus one fighting capability, and these multiple attacks that I talked about. When you overlay that over the one minute round, you start to see how heroic this is. As, for instance, a fighting man in 0e becomes more efficient in battle, more proven in battle, more skilled in battle, he is going to get more chances to roll the dice and therefore potentially cause damage against other normal foes, other normal men. And that's cool. That's heroic. That's how you get to that point of feeling like you're Conan the Barbarian or Fawford and the Grey Mouser just cutting down the bad guy's lackeys left and right. And then once you get into someone more powerful of a heroic level, then all of a sudden, you know, then you have the single attack versus single attack. You get into what Chainmail would call fantastical combat. And I think that this is important. Both AD&D and both Zero E assume this, but where did this change occur? And what, how does that change the game? Fundamentally change the perception of combat. Well, again, it happens in Holmes Basic. You see the following on page nine under time and movement in dungeons. It says a fully armored man can move 120 feet per turn at a cautious walk. So actually even the per, per turn movement was actually reduced in AD&D. If you caught what I read in zero E, you'll see that they can move 120 feet twice two moves in one turn is allowed in zero e in holmes basic it is one turn one move per turn instead of two moves per turn why that change was made i don't know maybe people are speed running the dungeon too much each turn takes 10 minutes scale time not actual in the character's magical universe in the player's universe, arguments sometimes develop and a turn may take considerably longer. Each turn is 10 minutes except during combat, where there are 10 melee rounds per turn, each round lasting 10 seconds. So we can see here that we get to this point where the combat round has been reduced to lasting 10 seconds, which is a drastic change. You've, you've snipped off 50 seconds of combat from 0e and advanced dungeons and dragons now i'm not sure exactly of the, the reason behind this i tried to do a quick little search as to what was the design choice behind changing it from one minute to 10 seconds and i don't really know what the answer is to that uh if you do in the comments please tell me below i'm interested in learning about what your research has brought up but i'm not really not that i'm not interested in that but it doesn't uh it's it's not as important to the conversation at hand here that the the metric of time used to measure a melee round was drastically reduced and so now in 10 seconds all of a sudden that single combat roll starts to represent a single attack a single roll is made and a single attack is made and it's a one one to one ratio whereas before we saw it's a lot more abstracted. The GM, I think, the, the DM is tasked with describing combat as like you're parrying your blades back and forth and he feints to the right, but you're able to block it and, and uh, parry out of the way. And you try for your own attack, roll a d20, it hits. You're actually able to hit and you slash him across the shoulder and then the melee continues back and forth. You know, that was kind of the idea behind it. Whereas within Holmes Basic, the little, the, the blue uh, basic book, we get to the point where time is now 10 seconds, and so now that single roll has to represent a single attack uh, made within that 10 second. More, I mean, you can still try and have the little back and forth, but if the character moved or any of that kind of stuff has occurred, then you you get into a point where there's you're you're trying to still fit as much stuff as you're trying to fit in in a zero e combat round into that and you're realizing everything's starting again to be on a one-to-one -one ratio basis of attack roll per attack side note what is interesting too is that within second edition uh, it actually kept the one minute combat rounds which i think is interesting cool and, and fascinating but we get to the point where in modern editions, it, the, the time frame has been compressed even further into six seconds. And so within six seconds, within a 5e game, you can move and also attack. You can move, let's say, 30 feet and attack. So therefore, 
you're moving and then you're rolling. That one roll is a roll for a single attack with a weapon. There's there's no way of abstracting combat out within the six second time frame. I mean, you can a little bit, but not nearly as much as you can in Zero E or in AD and D, where there's this far more like cinematic Errol Flynn sort of feel to combat that fifth edition just completely lacks um it's gone down to to i think in my opinion um video gamey sort of like move and attack this six second round in 5e has come it's a precur it's a it traces its heritage back to the home's basic for better or worse whether you like this or not this is what happened and what makes it interesting is that when you have the 10 second round, it's it's a lot more ridiculous to uh, put in the uh, fighting capability from Chainmail and overlay over the top of that. You really can't do that anymore. And especially if you are playing with Chainmail, and this is something I didn't get into in the last video, but let's say that you're playing with Chainmail and someone is using a dagger and someone is using a polearm, that dagger is going to get like two or three attacks against the polearm user within that one minute round. Makes perfect sense within the one minute round as, as they are attacking. The dagger is a lot more nimble and able, like if the person with the dagger is able to get past the defenses of the polearm person, first of all, and they're able to get into close range combat, they're going to be getting many more attacks against the uh, individual with the polearm than the person with the polearm is going to get against them. And this is carried over with uh, weapon speed in ad and first edition where you know you have a similar thing where uh, weapon speed is sort of like weapon class in chainmail and it was used to both measure the speed but also size of the weapon the smaller the weapon obviously a lot of times the faster it's going to be more maneuverable and therefore more attacks with a smaller weapon against a bigger weapon if again you can get past the defenses of the person using the bigger weapon within a one minute round you're able to have that so if you're a, a fighting man or or a cleric or even a magic user in zero e using a dagger with with the multiple attacks that you get against other foes plus the weapon speeds that are involved the weapon classes from chainmail and you have let's say eight attacks in a one minute round that still is reasonable that still makes sense but in 10 seconds i don't know about that it's starting to get kind of silly at that point um, and when you get into six seconds, like in 5e, it's virtually impossible. Uh, you're just doing like the, the prison shank, like fast stab of the little shiv into someone at that point. And uh, I don't know if that's necessarily heroic, but I digress. I think that it's interesting. Um, I think that this concept of the one minute round overlays very nicely over the concept that I had introduced in the last video with as far as fighting capability from Chainmail. And the moment you get rid of the one minute round, you no longer have that fighting capability. The game now has to go towards one die roll equals specifically one attack. And for better or worse, it started in home basic. That's just the way it is. That's the history of uh, one minute and 10 second round. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you found it interesting. If you do like this kind of content, please like, subscribe, share the video. Consider becoming a channel supporter. You can do so right here on YouTube or on my subscribe star or on the Gilded server. Your choice. Or just, you know, like the videos and, again, share them with your friends if you find this stuff interesting. Uh, that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it uh, somewhat informational like the last one. And that's going to do it for this video, guys. I will talk to you guys next time. Peace out.